Единственный шанс выжить – это сложить оружие и уйти из Мариуполя. The Russian offensive in the east continues. Through the last 48 hours, the Russians shelled several Ukrainian cities. In Odessa, Russian cruise missiles indiscriminately struck the city. Two apartment blocks were hit, taking the lives of several civilians, including an only three months old baby girl. At least 11 people were wounded. A cemetery was also struck. An elderly lady, who was just visiting the grave of her deceased husband, was wounded. Fortunately though, she survived. In Dnipropetrovsk, Russian missiles struck industrial buildings and a railway station. A 48-year-old man was killed in this attack. In Kharkiv, Russian missiles aimed at civilian targets again struck down. Many civilians were wounded in these attacks. We don't know how many innocent people lost their lives yet. This time the Russians were apparently targeting totally random residential areas. Again confirming what we already know too well, that Vlad Dimat is using terrorism as a weapon against Ukrainian civilians. The Russian army is basically using the exact same tactics as terrorist groups such as ISIS or Al-Qaeda. The difference being that the Russians have way better weapons. Their strategy of using bombs to blow up innocent civilians in cities remains the same though. In the Donetsk region, Russian forces are trying to push towards the cities of Sloviansk and Kramatorsk. The Russians are using mortars, artillery and rocket launchers along the entire line of contact. The Ukrainians, however, are firmly denying the Russians wherever they try to advance. The Ukrainian soldiers are destroying Russian tanks. Shooting down Russian helicopters. And blowing up their weapon stashes. In the Luhansk region, Russian artillery targeted houses and apartment blocks. At least seven civilians are reported to have lost their lives. Brutal street fighting is reported in Popasna and Marinka as the Russians are pushing hard to take those very important cities. Heavy fighting is also taking place in the outskirts of Severodonetsk. However, the Ukrainian army seems to be denying the Russian advance in all three cities. South of Isium, Russian advances were again pushed back by the Ukrainians as they tried to take the villages of Dovhenke, Paskov and Velika Komishuavka, making this the third time in a row the Russians try and fail to take these villages. Now Vladimir Putin declared a Russian victory in Mariupol a few days ago. He also ordered his defense minister Sergei Shoigu to seal off the Azovstal plant and lay siege. Like everything else that comes out of the Kremlin, that was a lie as well. After indiscriminate Russian shelling of the entire plant, reports are that Russian troops are trying to storm and take the area. The latest indications are that the Ukrainian defenders are holding their ground and denying the invaders' attack. It also appears that Vladimir Putin has transferred the 64th Motorized Armor Brigade to Mariupol. If you don't know who these barbarians are, let me tell you. The Russian soldiers of the 64th Brigade are the worst of the worst. Many of them are criminals. These so-called soldiers were the ones who committed the atrocities in Butcher. They are the same people who executed random civilians in the street. The same ones who held young Ukrainian women captive in dark basements where they would force themselves upon them as they pleased. I'm not even sure that people is the right word to use about them. But whatever we choose to call them, they are in Mariupol right now, committing the same heinous crimes against civilians as they did in Butcher. And they deserve absolutely no quarter. Now we know they are in Mariupol because heroic soldiers from the Azov Battalion again went behind enemy lines and destroyed a tank belonging to the unit.
Russian soldiers in general are running amok in Mariupol. They are doing exactly as they please. They steal, they force themselves on women, and they take the lives of innocent civilians. Many Mariupol residents are forced to bury the bodies of their loved ones in their gardens or their yards. The situation in the city is absolutely catastrophic. It can't be overstated. Thousands of Ukrainian civilians have been kidnapped by the Russians and tricked or forced onto buses, taking them to camps in remote parts of Russia. And no, the current year isn't 1942, it's 2022. This isn't the first time Russia uses this strategy in Ukraine though. From 1940 to 1953, the Soviets deported close to 600,000 Ukrainians in a move to suppress the country. Now Putin is doing it all over again. And the atrocities the Russian troops have committed in Mariupol is not just a war crime. It's a premeditated crime against humanity. And Putin, Shoigo, Dvornikov and all the Russian generals responsible for the mass murders, the mass sexual assaults and the mass deportations deserve the same fate that were given to the perpetrators of World War II. With the courage and competence showed by the Ukrainian army across the whole country, in time, Mariupol will be fully liberated again. In the occupied city of Kherson and its surrounding area, the Russians are trying to force a fake referendum in the middle of a war and heavy fighting. They want to do the same thing they did in Donetsk, Luhansk and Crimea back in 2014. They will hold a fake referendum with the outcome already decided beforehand. They will then say that the people have decided to break away from Ukraine and establish the Kherson People's Republic. Then they will hold another fake referendum and say that the people of this fake country has decided to become part of Russia. Now Russian state media has already released footage that they say is taken in the Rosavka district. The footage appears to show some elderly people unanimously voting to join the so-called Donetsk People's Republic. According to Russian state media, these people are authorized to make that decision. However, no one knows who these people are or who granted them the powers to do this. It does, however, show us how the Russians plan on conducting these fake referendums in other parts of Ukraine. Now reports are saying that Putin actually plans on holding these fake referendums and declare new pseudo-republics all over the Russian-occupied parts of Ukraine. This means that Vladimir Putin wants to annex all the territory his troops can manage to occupy. But as the flow of Western weapons for the Ukrainian army increases and the morale of the Russian soldiers and their families back in Russia falls, it looks more and more like the Ukrainians will win this war on the ground. Vlad Dimat, however, will never accept defeat. So the question remains, what will Vladimir Putin do when he loses the war? Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please go like, comment and subscribe as it helps to spread the video to others.